Hey guys and welcome back to my channel, Luke here again, good to have you with us. Today on episode 2 we're going to be talking about the solution to the problems we outlined with blockchain and blockchain adoption in the previous episode. So if you actually haven't seen that episode, how about you head back over to the first one, check it out and then come back and join us later. I'll put up a link now just so you get to it nice and easy. But just to recap, some of the issues that uh, blockchain is facing is uh, obviously interoperability and how two different chains communicate with each other. So this episode we're going to be going through Quant Network's solution and the overledger and how it seamlessly uh, solves this problem. Another one, uh, the other major issue for enterprises was connectivity and this basically just means how easy it is to integrate uh, existing systems into blockchain which is a massive thing because all these big enterprises they've already got, obviously they've already got backend systems and legacy systems and databases in place and they don't want to have to go through months and months of proof of concepts and converting it all onto different chains so you need to have a very simple and easy way to integrate and you'll see what I mean when I when we get to it in a minute but here we go let's dive right in so we're on the we're on the quant network page right here and straight away they've got a nice beautiful connecting the world's networks to blockchain blockchain with just three lines of code now I'll I'll come back to this point in just a second but I want to go through the overledger itself and it's going to be it's going to be very dumbed down so it's going to be very basic um, I'm not a very technical person but however I will skim through the white paper and also give you guys the white paper link so if you are very technical feel free to jump into that and go through the nitty gritties alright we remove the barriers for enterprise and this is what I wanted to talk to this is why it's so important interoperability flexibility and choice no matter where you are in your project lifecycle, Overledger provides you the opportunity to safely use any DLT with the added benefits of flexibility and choice to change your technology stack or migrate to another ch technology whenever needed. So this is perfect. This is flexibility, what I'm talking about. Enterprises don't want to get locked into a single chain. They just don't. What if the fees, like we saw in uh, December 2017, the fees on Bitcoin and Ethereum, or well, the networks get clogged and congested and it just doesn't become viable anymore. They need other options. Uh, find out about the benefits of a multi-chain strategy and how Overledger addresses the issues of scalability, resilience, and proprietary lock-in. And here we go. This is, for me, this is the selling point here. Um, Overledger harnesses every single advantage from all the other blockchains and puts them into you know in one. You know you got people out there who always rave about you know Ripple's speed or Ethereum smart contracts or Bitcoin's distrib you know uh, distributed network, or you've got people you know talking about oh you know Monero's got this great privacy. Why not have all of these beautiful things together in once? And this is how a multi-chain strategy works. It implements the best parts and puts it all together. Moving on to the next point, simplicity. We reduce the complexity for organizations to take advantage of DLT with existing technical resources. This is huge. Existing technical resources. If we go back to the first, uh, the first video, we talked about how these enterprises don't want to have to hire in new blockchain developers. You know, they don't understand it. So it needs to be very easy. We simplify adoption and dramatically reduce the effort and infrastructure needed to start using distributed ledger technology in your enterprise. Now I'll get to this in a minute, they have a very awesome way. And future proof, we, we touched on this in the last episode, identify new business models and revenue streams. We give organizations the agility and ability to shift direction and move rapidly to take advantage of new opportunities and innovations. This is what I was talking about. If there's a new blockchain that comes out in five years time, blockchain X, and it is Top Gun, like it's the best. It's got the best of everything somehow, like I don't know. You know, you need to have flexibility to migrate to that if you want, and it needs to be easy. We handle the complexity of using distributed ledgers by providing an enterprise abstraction layer to customers. Overledger reduces the risks of the rapid pace of change, so you don't have to change your entire code base just to stay up to up to date as technology evolves. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This is huge. You don't have to redevelop every single time a new chain comes out or there's something important. You know, you just gotta stay stay up to date with Overledger and Overledger will take care of it for you. Their connectors will take care of it. So our solutions. Overledger. Overledger is the world's first blockchain operating system that not only connects blockchains to one another, but also connects existing networks to blockchain and facilitates the creation of internet scale multi-chain applications. Key benefits. 
address the major limitations of current blockchain technology and unlock its true potential. This is what I mean by major limitations. We talked about the blockchain trilemma. Um, you know, if if a network gets clogged or there's not enough transactions per second, you know, uh, Overledger actually helps that by you know you can put different aspects of your of your map through different channels, unlock and distribute value in applications across current and future blockchains, an agnostic platform that connects the world's networks and blockchains, and ensures you're not limited to any single vendor or technology. Huge. All right, let's move on. Here we go. The product. Yep, we just read that. Beautiful. Just read that one as well. Ah, okay, who can take advantage of Overledger? Enterprises and, and individuals, as well as businesses, governments, developers. All right, so let's jump into the nitty gritties. This is all. This is all pretty good stuff. But you guys can check this out on their website if you want. All right, this is in their business paper actually, and it, I, I would recommend checking out both their business paper and their white paper, and I'll link both in the description, incredibly good reads. Actually, probably some of the best white papers and business papers I've seen in the space. I mean, the white paper, I don't even, I'm not even sure I understood. It was pretty complex. Anyway, let's dive into here. All right, so this diagram, this explains the representation of the current blockchain architecture. And as we spoke about in the other video, you've got, you know, Ethereum, you've got Ripple, and you've got, uh, what do we say, Hyperledger, right? And you've got different dApps. And they work fine in their isolated channel. You know what? They work fine. But they can't work cross. They can only work up and down in this diagram. They can't work across. They can't communicate. And they can only use this network. So they can't use all the different uh, advantages of the other networks at the same time. They can only use what's in this section. That's why they're all labeled Cs. You know, blockchain protocol C, blockchain protocol B. So let's scroll down, <clears throat> I, I believe we'll find it here, is the next diagram I want to show. Okay, now this is this is it, this is the golden goose, this is what you guys need to understand. This is the most simple, sim simple, simple, simplistic diagram of Overledger, alright? So here we go, we'll scroll back up real quick, sorry, here we go, single columns, can't go across, can't go across. Let's scroll down, an, over, an operating system for multi-chain dApps, maps. So here we go, this is the application level. So it's the similar where the dApps sit, but instead you've got map A, B, or B, C. Now as you notice, A and B, it can run on blockchain A, what do we say, Ethereum and blockchain B, Ripple, at the same time. It can also run on Ripple and Hyperledger at the same time, or potentially it could run on all three at the same time, map A, B, C. So here we go, this is where Overledger sits. It sits between the maps, or well, the applications where your developers develop an application, yeah, pretty much. So it sits between that level, up the top, that's where you code and develop what you want to use, and then it sits here, this overledger, overledger layer here, in between, on top of, sorry, on top of the blockchain networks. Now, here we go, this is all the, the detailed stuff, and it mentions it, it mentions it quite well here, and it also gets into it, gets really into it in um, the overledger philosophy, philo I'm not even Philosoph philosophy, there we go. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so this is the one you got to remember. It's an operating system and it sits on top of these blockchain protocols. And it's beautiful because it allows you to connect to all the blockchains that are currently connected to the overledger, which are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Hyperledger, IOTA, JP Morgan's Quorum, and they're currently working on Quarter. Now, if you haven't heard of Quarter, that's a big one in the financial industry. I think next on the list may actually be Red Belly as well, which can do, I think they've got 400,000 or 600,000 transactions per second. It's, an, uh, it's a fellow Australian project from uh, Data61. But yeah, basically they build connectors and are uh, based on client demand. So, that's how it works. It's, it looks pretty simple here, but that's just to get your head around it. It allows people to build a map that can run on all the blockchains at one time. And it can send them, it can send different parts to different aspects. So let's say, here's a perfect example actually, I'll bring it up, here we go. Part of our Overledger roadmap, we're releasing example multi-chain applications. Today the Quant team created a decentralized Amazon that is running across Ethereum, Bitcoin and Ripple at the same time. Just have a look at some of these photos here. Here we go, a motorcycle shop. 
pretty snazzy. There we go, wallet. Here we go, insurance tax payment. Now, I think if we, if we jump over to Reddit here, today the Quant team created a decentralized Amazon that is simply, yep, yeah, we've read that. It's a powerful example of what is possible with Overledger, making use of the different blockchains, the technology and features of the different chains and sim simultaneously connecting them to combine silo data value and technical features. We've taken payment from any of the three chains, so they got payment from Bitcoin, Ethereum and Ripple, connected ownership data, uploaded it as an image, stored on Bitcoin with registration data on Ripple and insurance data which is on Ethereum. So this is what I'm talking about. You can put your payments through Ripple in the middle because it's faster. You can put your legal insurance stuff through Ethereum because the smart contracts work better. While you can put, geez, I don't know, a, a private transaction or something you don't really want people to see on a private chain over here. So that's the beauty of Overledger. It, it looks pretty. It looks pretty simple here. And as I said, if you're a, a if you're a techie guy and you want to jump into the real details of it then um, you can scroll through here and I'm just going to whiz through real quick but it does explain every single, it, it actually split into different layers the overledger is split into different layers so I'll explain those actually real quick, I won't explain them but I'll just I'll list them, so there's a transaction layer, there's a messaging layer, there's a filtering and ordering layer and there's an application layer, so I mean if you guys want to read through this it would be a pretty good overview so that's pretty much how it works, I mean if there's any questions or anything like that Hit me up a, a message in the in the comments and we'll walk, we'll walk through it maybe in a more technical video. But more importantly, this is what I wanted to show you. Three lines of code, that's all it takes to connect your enterprise to blockchain. Overledger makes it possible. So what they've done, if we jump back over here. <clears throat> where did we say? Simplicity, this is the one. It's got to be easy for people to be able to connect their systems to DLT. And Quant Network does that. Three lines of code it takes for them to connect to the SDK or to connect to the um, the Overledger system and start developing maps, which is huge because you don't have to redesign your systems or anything like that. Now you're probably wondering, oh, this is oh, this is huge. Like, when is this going to be released? Well, get this right. Yes, I know. The team have been working on this for quite a while, and the core technology is actually patented. The um. The very core, it's about 1% of the overall system is patented for um, business reasons. But if you want to go check out, it's actually, oh, oh, some notifications, QuantX, right? They had a launch in November, and the, this video here, I'll link in the description, is an exploration of Overledger and demonstration of maps. Now, they actually did a live demo of a voting app run on uh, numerous different chains. It was pretty cool, pretty seamless, and the audience didn't even know they were running on uh, on blockchain. So check that out. Now, want developer. Develop, this is kind of like the, the map store at the moment. We'll talk about the map store later. But the SDK for Overledger was actually released end of September. So right now, if you're a developer, jump on here and start developing a map. All right, it's, it's already out, it already works. There are already clients building on it. Now, if we actually go to I think if we go here, no, that's the marketplace. So the uh, SDK is already out. As I said, you could develop upon it. However, uh, the connectors. So what connects Overledger to different chains? That will be um, open sourced in the coming months. Which means if you want to connect Overledger to Tron, you can. But what's really imp what's really interesting here is there's actually 20 maps registered, 124 developers, and check this out. Verified QNT balance, 1.6 million. Now this is huge, and I'll talk about, I'll do a completely separate video on token utility, but this is huge. <clears throat> Sorry. Now, moving on. White paper, competition. I can hear you screaming it. Oh, but Luke, there's other people doing the same thing. No, not really. They're trying to tackle the same problem, but they're going about it differently. Now, this is in the white paper, this diagram and it perfectly describes the differences, right? Overledger is the only one that can go to any to any chain with no connecting bridge or no extra overhead or complexity, which is a massive, a massive bonus for them. Now, I think this video is getting a little bit long, so I might save the competition for another episode, but just take a look here. It's in the white paper, I'll link it all. 
And this is another great article I'll link. Overledger will restore our trust in the internet. It's a really good one, a nice one to explain kind of the problems and where Overledger sits. Maybe a really good one to check out. <clears throat> Now, that's it for today. The next episode is going to be about the team. And, uh, geez, it's, a, it's, a, it's an episode you do not want to miss. I mean, these guys are absolutely just incredible. So I hope you guys stick around and uh, check it out. Thank you.